from the guy who presented Social Anxiety the anime, now presenting Social Anxiety the National Anthem. Now everyone, please rise for our National Anthem. It seems like every season of cute girls doing cute things gives us a god tier song with god tier lyrics, and this time it's Guitar, Loneliness, and the Blue Planet. The ass! Stuff was even chad enough to give us a full MV! As if the anime itself wasn't already beautiful enough! It's printing money! It's like liquor is record! When I first heard this song, I was absolutely floored by how relatable the lyrics were and immediately fell in love. So today, I'd like to go through and break down the meaning behind them. They're written by Zack, of course they're legendary. You know, the classroom of the elite opening people. It's Just like last time with Hananoto, I did a little matching with a website, took what I thought sounded good, and translated the rest myself. I figured I'd try to translate the lyrics in a way so that the finer details and tone it's trying to convey would get across as much as possible. Again, I'm not exactly perfect at Japanese, so if you guys find any mistakes, then please tell me in the comments. Before we start going through the lyrics, I'd like to point out that in the anime, the lyrics were written by Bochi herself. This means that the entire song is clearly written from Bochi's perspective, and yeah, it shows. It's a song that explores the psychology of somebody with social anxiety and to quite a deep level. It really feels like the depths of someone's heart, somebody screaming their emotions out with no other outlet. And man, is it a bullet to my heart. It's so relatable. Very on brand for this anime. 10 out of 10. Marketing godman Steve Ligma Jobs would be proud. We begin this beautiful song by giving the middle Fuck finger you. to the sky. Yeah, who cares about your feelings? Your life is nothing. You serve zero purpose. In context, these two lines are probably to show how disconnected Bochi is from the world. When you have no friends and only have school and one hobby you're literally dedicating half your life and soul to, you start to feel like every day is the same. It's always the same old mundane routine. You eat shit guitar, maybe jack off to the guitar, I, I don't know if that's what you're into, and sleep. There is zero change going on in your life. Yes, you have a thing you're passionate about, but if it's the one and only thing keeping you alive, then the endless cycle persists nonetheless. This is the state of mind I imagined Bochi had been going through her entire life, since, well, she's been alone for as long as she can remember. Within this endless loop that is life, Bochi starts not to care about her surroundings, about the world around her, because, well, she doesn't have friends, she doesn't have a reason to. So... Yeah, Fuck the sky! You can't even change color at will, can you? Even my PC and its dying breath can do that! Scrub! Fuck you! Can you lose your virginity to the sky if you fuck air? The next two lines continues the same message. Just as Bochi starts to realize it's time to change the type of clothes she's wearing, spring and autumn pull in understandable have a nice day and disappear like a dad. This is representative of how, again, within this mundane cycle of life, Time just kinda flies by and with a blink, years upon years just vanish. You hear people talk about this phenomenon online and it's terrifying how used you can become to such an unsaturated, unfulfilling life. In the lyrics, this lack of time awareness is depicted through Bochi not even noticing the seasons changing. Or, you know, it's global warming. Curse you oil companies, how dare you hurt my waifu! We then move on from the state of life to the state of crippling social anxiety in the pre-chorus. Not being able to breathe properly can be attributed to the anxiety Bochi faces when attempting to communicate with someone. How overwhelmed she feels when she has to do so. I think it's a pretty common symptom. I think. From personal experience. She's just like me! The pressuring information is probably what the other person is trying to communicate to Bochi, and Bochi describes it as a dizzying spiral because she's attempting to process it and thinking of an appropriate reply, but is clearly struggling. So she asks, where am I? as she's trapped in her own spiral of thoughts, not knowing what to say or what to do. This is seen a lot in the anime, where Bochi overthinks and gets trapped in her own world of thoughts. Hey look, I think it's fair game to call becoming a fire-breathing, clout-chasing dinosaur a spiral of thoughts. I know you've had worse fantasies, you're all weebs, you can't hide from me! The next two lines are goddamn emotional. Bochi's breathing rings so much to herself, and you can interpret this both physically and mentally. If she's always by herself in her closet, it's natural that she hears her own breathing a lot more than most people, but mentally, it's like only she can hear herself. Spending her days in solitude, her life, her thoughts, so much she wants to say, but she can't. All she can do is bottle it up to herself. The world doesn't make a sound because just like how the world can't hear her, she's so disconnected she can't hear the world. 
all she has is her own thoughts, her own world, and her own mind. You know, I didn't think an anime featuring cyberpunk cyberpsychosis with eldritch god screaming could bring me to tears, but Bochi needs a hug. She needs a headbat. Someone give her a headbat. Okay, close enough. If Bochi didn't have a loving family... <laughs> that mostly loving family... Then we might have had this. Moving on to the chorus, dropping harder than the guitar slamming your toe, we have Butchie screaming that it's not enough. That she wants to be noticed. Yet this scream is countered by her inability to even make a sound in the world. It's no secret that Butchie wants to be popular. She said it herself, she wants people to fawn over her. But despite this desire, despite how much she wants to get this message across, she can't. She can't say it. She can't convey anything. Hence her screams amounting to nothing more than a scribble of a sound, unheard by anyone. It truly gives off the feeling of someone that looks okay on the outside, as in she's not having any mental breakdowns crying dramatically on the outside, yet screaming on the inside with all her thoughts and feelings bottled up to herself. This is continued in the next two sentences, with her questioning who to show her true self to. If she has no friends, who can she just be herself to? Who can she talk to without putting up dozens of emotional barriers? Who can she be vulnerable to? Nobody. Because she's alone. Bochi has always been a very closed off person, and her being afraid to show anyone her true self seems almost natural to her more than timid personality. With no friends to consult, to talk to, all she can do is play her music and scream to the stars. I'd like to think the stars refers to her online channel because screaming to the stars is kind of like screaming to an invisible internet audience. You're just screaming into a void, not expecting a reply. This screaming into the void is the only way she can express herself, so amidst her self-hate, amidst her thinking herself an idiot, she sings and vents all of her true feelings towards this void because it's all she feels she can do. Okay, look, I get it. Technically, Kita sings, but uh, <laughs> the song's about her. Shut up. If my dog writes a song, it can't <laughs> sing. I have to sing for it. What the fuck is this analogy? Now the second verse. I imagine replacing an elixir is a metaphor for everyday work. It's something that's so common, so natural in this world that you wouldn't really think twice about it. This is basically the same way Bochi sees practicing guitar. It's become so ingrained in her daily routine that she doesn't even really think about doing it. It comes naturally to her, like eating. Along the way, she might chip her nail practicing, but you know, just like how building a city comes with deforestation, it comes with the job. You get used to it. The 300mm radius body is definitely referring to the guitar, as it's pretty much Bochi's sole way of desperately crying out, as we've talked about. Okay, look! I don't play any instruments. I don't get it. But I'm sure there's some guitar with 300mm radius. It's like when they say the average height is 170cm. I'm sure I can find some 147cm midget that defies all laws of evolution, that I can yeet across the globe into orbiting the fucking planet by the laws of gravitation. This next line cuts quite deep. To the music, this is the Earth. On the surface, it seems to be saying that to the music being played, the guitar is everything. The guitar is what's producing the music, so in the eyes of the music, the guitar is its entire world, hence the earth. Especially because the guitar's only purpose is to, well, produce music. Okay, look, I get it. You can use it as a weapon. I can fucking grab the midget from orbit and use it as a baseball bat. The midget's purpose is existence. The guitar's purpose is music! So yeah, that's why the guitar is everything in the eyes of the music. But if we look at this at a deeper level, we can perhaps theorize that the music infers to Bochi herself. In the eyes of her music, in the eyes of her, the guitar is everything. The guitar is her entire world. And this makes complete sense. Other than, uh, existing, the guitar is all that she does. It's like taking away Minecraft from a 5 year old, or narcissism from a YouTuber, or horniness from an idol fan. They're nothing without it. It's obvious that the guitar is the one thing Bochi is kinda proud of, that she feels genuinely happy about. You get to see how excited she is when others online enjoy her music, and she probably feels that this is her only real achievement. 
With no social life, no other real life skills, no anything, this is probably the only thing she can genuinely say she's proud of, hence the guitar being the earth, her entire world. It's all she has to express herself, and it's her only real success at life. It's the double killer combo! KFC can only dream of their chicken and fries going as well together as these two. Grasping the air and punching the sky are both actions that infer to frustration. They're actions that you know won't do anything, but you do anyway in a state of hopelessness. And this is shown in the next line. Nothing happens, and Butchie feels powerless. A statement depicting how useless Butchie feels herself to be. That no matter how much she tries to grasp the air or punch the sky, yeah fuck you Sky, I support Sky racism because my wife who says so. Skies don't deserve human rights, I am taking this to the United Nations. Take 2. No matter how much she does this, she can't make a change to the world. Yet mysteriously, the moment she pulls on the strings of iron, something feels like it's changed, as if her guitar opened a whole new world to her. This could refer to her love for the guitar in general and how much it's changed her, but it could also be referring to her starting to play the guitar in the band. That through this guitar, she finally made her first friends and her world is starting to change. A stark contrast to the endless days of nothingness previously mentioned. Chorus Patch 2.0 has Bochi screaming at the void that it's too bright, that she doesn't want someone to shine so much. Rather than referring to a specific person, I think we can assume it's referring to other people in general since I don't recall Bochi having any particular role model. The feeling being depicted here is a sense of inferiority. She sees people that Kita socialize like mating dolphins, she sees the bands on TV rock on and succeed, she sees Nijika be an extra. Extra, 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 and she in turn feels that she can't do anything, that she's pathetic. To the extent that when she is the one on stage, when she has the opportunity to be the main character in the spotlight, she'll just end up looking even more worthless than she already is in comparison. That her pathetic shadow will appear more pronounced in a brighting, shining spotlight. This simply highlights the sense of inferiority Bochia always feels when seeing normal people every day who don't struggle like she does. Yet despite this endless black hole of misery, even when she screams not to shine, she unknowingly gets fired up, and even she doesn't understand. We can easily infer this to be the playing of the guitar, perhaps on stage or in front of an audience since it is her only real passion, and we know it's her dream for people to go full Justin Bieber fangirls over her. Her pure passion and love for performing with the guitar can take over her negative thoughts even if momentarily, like when she played on the street in front of a small crowd. She loves it so much that through all of her pain, she'll still continue to perform and sing into the void, indicated by her heart refusing to let go of the pure adrenaline powering her body. Silence. I am not a biologist. I know Einstein is rolling in his grave. I said I'm not a biologist! The bridge begins with Bochi simply stating that she is alone on this blue planet. A very straightforward message, since she lives on a blue planet and has no friends? In this loneliness, she's heard many different sounds. This probably refers to, well, everything she's seen go on around her. She's seen many people come and go, many bands pop off and shine. Hell, it could be referring to her family being normal unlike her. Don't think it feels particularly good when the 5 year old little shit seems to be doing better than you at life. Living on this planet that's been spinning for billions of years, in the solitude that's felt like an eternity, she just wants to shine. Even if for but a split second, she wants to truly be in the spotlight, to truly matter to other people, to truly be somebody. And this is followed by probably my favorite line in the song, a cry for people to listen. While it may look like just a simple but effective plea to listen, there is some genius 4D chess writing going on here. So, in Japanese, these two lines are kite and kike respectively. There are two layers that need to be explained here. These are basically two forms of the same verb. So imagine something like fuck and fucking. Same word, different grammatical uses. Kite is basically a softer way to make a request, and normally how people would request others to do something for them. The second one is almost like an order, a much more powerful way to say listen. So usually you'd only either say it jokingly with friends, or maybe when you're totally not an asshole boss orders you around. Or in this case, pretty much a way of screaming something out. Now we've established that the second listen is far more impactful. We know there's a transition from a perhaps bashful or at least softer listen to a far stronger listen. LISTEN! The second thing to point out is if you look closely, I say they're the same word, but the kanji here in the MV is different. 
Yeah, you got baited, get fucked! The reason is because these two kanjis for listen, even though this fucking dictionary says the same thing, are different. The first kanji is used when the sound naturally comes to your ears. So say you're in a cafe and they play some persona jazz music. You're not there to actively listen to the music, it's just there and you're naturally hearing it. Basically, think of it as, you exist and sound wave goes in you ear. The second one is when somebody pays attention and is actively trying to listen. Think something like going to a Sayuri concert and listening to Hananoto live. You're giving Sayuri your full concentrated attention to enjoy the concert, hence we use the second kanji. I think you can see where the genius writing is now. The first listen in my head is like Bochi trying to say, Hey, give it a listen if you happen to pass by. The second listen is like Bochi screaming, Listen to me, I am here, to the world. I don't know if this was intentional or a coincidence, but in the MV, it goes from white text black background to black text white background, as if at first, it's like Bochi can only hear herself, like near the beginning of the song, but the moment she cries at the world to listen to her, the world lights up as if she's been freed from the mental cage she's been trapped in for so long. This is followed by the ending chorus starting with what feels like the first time she's honestly confronted the world with her true feelings, actively telling the world, I am here. Bochi doesn't want to be a nobody forever. She doesn't want to be invisible forever. She wants the world to know that she exists. She's still unable to make a sound. She still suffers from her social anxiety as much as ever, and things won't change in a flash. But for the first time, she's able to honestly convey her feelings. She's able to tell the world with her own words. I want to matter. I want to exist. If we look back at the entire structure of the song, again, I don't know if this was on purpose, but it's a timeline that flows surprisingly well. The TV size, up to the end of the first chorus, is just Bochi in her own mind. It's entirely the psychology of her social anxiety. The second third of the song, up to the end of the second chorus, has Bochi starting to realize that through her guitar, something might be able to change. But she still doubts herself. Finally, in the end, we have her honestly confront what she truly wants from the depths of her heart, and in the most straightforward way, in the complete polar opposite fashion of Big Bad Daddy's social anxiety, she declares her own existence. She tells people to listen to her, to look at her, completing the timeline. I believe this is Bochi's way of saying that she's trying to move forward and be who she wants to be, especially with that direct declaration at the end of the song. A beautiful ending to a beautifully written song. She can put what I like to call a Tanjiro, aka lol get good just power up and be good bro to solve all your problems, but she is certainly doing her best. Give her a gold medal for effort, fuck the Olympics, fuck competition, fuck people, but she deserves everything. Everything in this song finally pulls a mathematician, I'm kidding they're all psychopaths, goes full circle and comes back to an impressively accurate title. Guitar, Loneliness, and the Blue Planet. A song depicting the relationship between Bochi's guitar, Bochi's loneliness, and Bochi's existence on this blue planet. I know I said fuck people, but fuck people, give Zack the Nobel Prize. Surely curing social anxiety will lead to world peace led by the strongest social anxiety girl. Zack is people, like, no, not, not people, but like, people, like, people, people. Speaking of the strongest social anxiety girl, doesn't Bochi remind you of someone? Super introverted, not exactly good at speaking, expresses herself through her guitar and music, actually very beautiful and half the population simp them, gave guitar street performances. That's right, it's Sayuri, and she sang Hananoto, and it's Licorice Miracle!